Good morning. This is going to be for the 21st of March. We will be doing chapter 27. A few verses from chapter 26 I wanted to reiterate from last week. And uh, I am using the New American Standard today, and thus we will be reading right now. Chapter 27. In that day the Lord will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, with his fierce and great and mighty sword, even Leviathan the twisted serpent, and he will kill the dragon who lives in the sea. In that day a vineyard of wine sing of it. I, the Lord, am its keeper. I water it every moment, so that no one will damage it. I guard it night and day. I have no wrath. Should someone give me briars and thorns in battle, then I would step on them. I would burn them completely. Or let him rely on my protection. Let him make peace with me. Let him make peace with me. In the days to come, Jacob will take root. Israel will blossom and sprout. And they will fill the whole earth with fruit. Like the striking of him who has struck them, has he struck them. Or like the slaughter of his slain, had they been slain? You contended with them by banishing them, by driving them away. With his fierce wind, he has expelled them on the day of the east wind. Therefore, through this, Jacob's iniquity will be forgiven. And this will be the full price of the pardoning of his sin. When he makes all the altar stones like pulverized chalk stones, when ashram and incense altars will not stand, for the fortified city is isolated, a homestead forlorn and forsaken like the desert. There the calf will graze, and there it will lie down and feed on its branches. When its limbs are dry, they are broken off. Women come and make a fire with them, for they are not a people of discernment. Therefore, their maker will not have compassion on them, and their creator will not be gracious on them. In that day, the Lord will start his threshing from the flowing stream of the Euphrates to the brook of Egypt, and you will be gathered upon one by one, O sons of Israel. It will come about also in that day that a great trumpet will be blown, and those who are perishing in the land of Assyria and who are scattered in the land of Egypt will come and worship the Lord in the holy mountain at Jerusalem. <clears throat> now, who's confused by all that? Yeah. A little hard to understand in this translation and King James translation. <laughs> they are a little hard to understand. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. We were wondering... Mom wouldn't get out of bed. Uh huh. Blame <laughs> game. Blame see the blame game. Blame game. The woman did it. We went out Friday night. We just haven't recovered since. <laughs> there you go. All right. Now I can start with verse one because. I can lead back to chapter 26 from verse 1 of chapter 27. So, in that day the Lord will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, with his fierce and great and mighty sword. What day? Lynn? Judgment day. The end. Judgment day. Alright. This is what I kind of... Yeah, it, is. <laughs> it is sort of kind of. And it's also, did I have a question from chapter 26? What is that day? Oh, the day of salvation. Uh, let's, one thing I did not explain last week, which I've gone over many times, always stay in context of what we are studying. Okay? So the, the, Lord, the Lord has already told Isaiah in the previous couple chapters about future events when God is going to do what, Norma? 
Judgment. Judge, yes. So <clears throat> we're talking about, or the question is about, the day that Isaiah has been explaining. Okay, because sometimes it's not <coughs> the end times judgments, because sometimes it's um, like when Babylon was going to come. You know, in that day, Nebuchadnezzar will come. It's like, well, what day is he talking about? Well, it's the day Nebuchadnezzar will come and tear down Jerusalem. Okay? So there are different in that days when you read it in the Old Testament. Okay? Everybody understand that? There's different prophetic times. Some are to an explicit day. Some are to an explicit city. Some are in general. Some are for the whole earth, all right, in that day. This time is a judgment right before the thousand-year reign of Christ, okay? So, what day? It is the day of judgment. Which is also known as the day of the Lord. Okay? Who said day of the Lord? Somebody in here did. No, I did. <clears throat> now, for the day of the Lord, so I want you to go back to 26, verse 19. <clears throat> this is going to be also in that day. Your dead will live, their corpses will rise, you who lie in the dust awake and shout for joy. For your dew is the dew of the dawn, and the earth will give birth to the departed spirits. Who are those people? We didn't hit this verse last week. Last week, the Lord already said no one will live, no one is given birth from the... Israel does not give birth to anyone. They have not spread the gospel message. Remember, God was angry with them for not being who they are. Then at the end, he comes in and says, but the earth will give up spirits. The earth will. People will live. Who are those people? The people that died before Christ came that were walking with Jesus, walking with God. They will if they have the same kind of faith as Abraham, but there's, there's more than that. The ones that walk with him throughout that time? Christians will too. We will all rise up with new bodies, remember? Oh, yeah. That too. First Thessalonians, Romans chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, all explain this. It's a mystery that is revealed. Paul writes, that all of us will get a new body. Okay? All of us who are dead on this earth, <clears throat> our bodies will rise up and meet those, our spirits in the air. Okay? <clears throat> and then all those who are alive on this earth will rise up and meet us together. Got it? Daniel, at the very end of the book of Daniel, the angel tells Daniel what? It is your time to die now. Go and take your rest. You will rise up again someday. David said the same thing when Bathsheba's first child died. <clears throat> I will someday go to meet him and we will live forever together when we will rise up at the end. Okay? It's all about at the end times, we will have bodies and we will be risen up and live with Christ forever in the new body. Because the Lord knows we don't want to exist without a body. Okay, now, when we die automatically, our spirits depart. And what's the verse? Charles Stanley says it very often. Absent with the body, Absent present, with the body with the present with the Lord. Okay, so I, I didn't want anybody to just like, well, what about our spirit right now? <clears throat> That's already taken care of. So now, remember <clears throat> that verse in 
chapter 26 is a prophetic part of Romans chapter 15, verse Corinthians chapter 15, and first Thessalonians. Okay, that's prophecy that Paul is teaching in the New Testament from way back in Isaiah. Okay? That was last week. It's 26 verse 19. Now, something for 20 through 21. Come, my people, enter into your rooms, close your doors behind you, hide for a little while until indignation runs its course. What does that remind you of? My people Israel, go hide. My indignation, that means the angel of death, is going to come around this earth. It's like the Passover. All who belong to me, go lock yourselves up while I wreak havoc on this earth, okay? For behold, the Lord is about to come out from his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, and the earth will reveal her bloodshed. Everyone who is murdered on this earth, and though we don't know about them, every, all the sins of the earth, will be revealed. God is going to reveal all to humankind. Okay? So then we get into 27. In that day, same day, same period of time. So we know that's the day of the Lord, the day of judgment. So with his fierce and great and mighty sword, what is that? That is correct. How does Jesus use his sword? Speaks it. Speaks? It's a what kind of sword? What does scripture say about the word of God? It is a double-edged sword. You take it one way, it slices. You take it another way, it slices. Paul says, I use the word of God to knock down all the false Lies, all the false teachings, all the walls, all the barriers that keep men from God. Okay? Nobody can stand up to Paul when Paul is preaching the Word of God. All their lies are revealed. Okay? Now, so we know that, and plus, you know, God can speak and use anybody and anything for his own purpose. Remember, he did that with Nebuchadnezzar, he did that with Cyrus. Whatever happens on this earth, God is allowed to happen or God has instigated to happen to the nations because he builds up nations, he tears down nations. Okay? It's only by the allowance of God that these things happen. He allows the devil to do what the devil is doing even right at this moment. The devil has no real power of his own. Only what is allowed by God. Okay? Now, with his fierce and great mighty sword, even Leviathan, the twisted serpent. Who is Leviathan? Right. Yeah, the devil. says, he, who is he? What's this verse say? It's a capital H. That means God. Yeah. He will kill the dragon who lives in the sea. In hell. Mm -mm. No. Where else would it be? Hmm. Who lives in, what does the sea refer to? Wow. When the three frogs come up on the shore in the book of Revelation and they look out at the sea. 
what does the Bible say? What is in Revelation? What does it say that the sea is? The people? All humanity. The devil lives among humanity. He is the prince of the power of the air. He is the one at work on earth right now, okay? That's not hell, what the sea is. It means the sea of humanity. He is the one that has power right now. If he was already in hell, God wouldn't have to deal with him, right? No, he's here now. God is going to deal with him on the day of judgment. Now, if he's going to kill him, is it really Satan or the devil? He as it is at work and will cause, perhaps it is this one. Because at the end of the seven years, the Antichrist is going to be killed, <coughs> so is the prophet, and they are going to be cast where? into the lake of fire. They're going to skip hell. They're going to be thrown directly into the lake of fire. The devil is going to be put where for that thousand years? He's not going to be put in the lake of fire yet. He's going to be in chains. Into a pit. Yes. He will be chained in a pit for a thousand years. At the end of the thousand years he will be let loose. <coughs> then he will gather whoever the rebels are still left on earth from that thousand years, and they'll try to fight against Christ to no avail, then he will be thrown into the lake of fire. Okay? That's why I'm not <clears throat> the Antichrist to me is the better answer, but the devil is the one at work in the Antichrist. Got it? He is at the, he is <clears throat> you know, the Antichrist is really just going to be a puppet. You know, kind of like, you know, yeah. somebody in office right now. <laughs> while, we're in the, while we're in the physical sense, yes. is the Leviathan, is it mentioned in the Bible in the physical sense anywhere that you know of? Because, you know, uh, people say dragons. Yeah, not really. people say that, you know, has dragons ever lived on the earth, basically? Is, is that you know of? Well, <laughs> there is a dragon <laughs> right. on the earth. Um, in the, it's called the Komodo Dragon. Right. And it's, um, yeah. what island is that? Galapagos. Galapagos, that's Galapolis. it. Right. The Galapagos Isles. And <clears throat> it's, you know, just a massive, massive lizard, really. Right. Um, but it's in a different, you know, the serpent here, <coughs> it's named serpent here, why? In the, like in the beginning of time. In the beginning. Yeah. And in the beginning, the serpent had legs. It was not the serpent without legs that we have now. God took the legs away from the serpent. Okay? The dragon part, you know, it's... I don't have an answer for that. Right. But we do know both have forked tongues. Um, what is a uh, symbol for forked tongue? Mm -hmm. No, it's an old saying. We've heard it, not all of y'all, well, not all of y'all are close to my age. <laughs> You're close to my age, man. <laughs> <laughs> to talking Steve, it, to talking Steve. Talking out of both sides of his mouth. Yes, talking out of both sides of your mouth. A liar. Who is Satan? He is a liar. He talks out of both sides of his mouth. Okay? You know, there was an old uh, Indian used, used to say it about white men. Yeah. You'd speak with fork and tongue. <clears throat> because the white man would lie to him about this and then, you know, turn around and do something else. At least that's in the cowboy movies. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that on Smokey Pistol. 
<laughs> otherwise known as gun smoke. <laughs> anyway, you know, that's, <clears throat> that is what's going to be happening. The Lord will throw the Antichrist and his false prophet into the lake of fire on that day. So then we go on. In that day, a vineyard of wine, sing of it. Now what day is this? Verse 2. What day is that? In that day. After the judgment. After this one is thrown into the lake of fire. Correct. Uh, we'll just write next day. <laughs> that is a very easy way to put it. Okay? It's right after Leviathan is punished and thrown into the lake of fire. The next period of time in that day. Okay? Now, who is the vineyard? What is the vineyard? The earth. No. Well, it's on the earth. Jerusalem. Israel. Israel. Israel is the vineyard. Whenever you read a vineyard, when Jesus spoke of the vineyard in the New Testament, when vineyard is used, it means Israel. Okay? I, the Lord, am its keeper. I water it every moment so that no one will damage it. I guard it day, night and day. What is the vine keeper the same as? God. Jesus. Well, the he vine keeper Lord. is God. I didn't say who is it. What is the job the same as? Shepherds. Yes. Who said shepherd? Susan? Susan. That's it. Same as shepherd. God is also our <coughs> shepherd. I'm writing that capital. So it's just as Jesus Christ is our shepherd, like the 23rd Psalm, and in the New Testament, and I think it's 2 Peter, he is the great shepherd. Okay? He is our shepherd. Same for Israel. He is their vine keeper, their vine dresser. All right? He is the one who waters. When you water, what happens? Fills the plant and it can grow. Then he tends the garden. Okay? Where are we? That no one will, all right. I water it every moment so that no one will damage it. I guard it night and day. He will watch over all Israel. How, do, how will he do this? From the temple. Because he's going to be reigning on the throne of David in Jerusalem. And by the power of what? The Holy Spirit. Okay. So, then it goes on to say, God's wrath on Israel is gone. I have no wrath. That doesn't mean God doesn't have wrath. It means that God's wrath for Israel at that time will be gone. Okay? Is his wrath for Israel gone right now? No. No. For the nations are gathering together now that Trump isn't in office. The nations are plotting to this very moment to go against Israel because Trump is in his office. You all see that? We have someone in office right now that's making deals with Iran again. Iran is what nation added together with Pakistan and Afghanistan? Syria? It's the uh, Esau. Persia. Persia. Iran, Afghanistan, and Pakistan are Persia. That's the number one nation that comes against... They're not the greatest nation. Don't get me wrong. But that's the number one nation listed that comes against Israel. Okay? There's a greater 
or larger, more powerful nation that will ally themselves with Persia. But there are other nations that will all align themselves with Iran. They are Afghanistan, Pakistan, Libya, mm -hmm. Yemen. These nations are all going to fight against Israel. We see these things happening. Okay? And who is the one that is going to fight gathering them together to destroy Israel? That will be destroyed. We've already gone over it. Leviathan or the Antichrist. Got it? Now, so God's wrath remains right now, but at that time, in that day, God's wrath against Israel will be gone. Okay? <clears throat> Romans 11, 26 and 7, which we went over briefly, because that was the last chapter I taught on in Romans, <coughs> says this. <coughs> And so all Israel will be saved just as it is written. <clears throat> the deliverer will come from Zion. He will remove ungodliness from Jacob. Who is Jacob? Israel. 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 Jackie, you knew that. I did. Okay. Why didn't you answer? I'm just seeing your more is faster. <laughs> she's just a doe. No, she's normal. I'm not normal. awake yet. I'm still sleeping. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. And that, right before that in 25, for I do not want you brethren to be uninformed. Now this is Paul in Romans, okay? Writing to the Roman, a lot of them were Jews, all right? in this church in Rome that he was writing to. But he's also writing to who? Us. Us in this very day. Um, uninformed of this mystery, so that you will not be wise in your own estimation that a partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. That means when the last... <coughs> Gentile gets saved, at the end of that seven year period, all Israel will understand that Jesus Christ is Lord. <coughs> Why do I believe that people will get saved during the seven years of tribulation? Because there are some people left who believe, but they didn't believe fully. That is one of them. The other one, there's 144,000 Jewish Witnesses. virgin men going across this earth telling people about Jesus Christ. There are going to be angels flying around in the air proclaiming Jesus Christ. People will get saved in that seven year period. Now, people have to be on this earth to live the thousand years after that day. Got it? There will be people on this earth who will start over again God's new creation of the earth. All right? Now, so in that day... Will the angels be seen? It's not seen. Doesn't say they won't be. Don't say they won't be. So? It could be. Yeah. Now, so there's no wrath. God's wrath is gone. <laughs> Should someone give me briars and thorns in battle? Should it says should, should someone give me? Who is the me? Us. Mm -hmm. God. 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 Look at your Bible. Yeah. Okay. God says, should somebody bother Israel with thorns and briars, he will do what? March, he'll Christian. just go right through. And they, they will be, he won't be able to be burned. Burn stopped. them up. Okay. So what are the thorns and briars? Devil's in the pit. Devil's in the pit now. If there are any thorns and briars in Israel, I will burn them up. Unbelievers. Unbelievers? 
any enemy that tries to attack Israel in that thousand years. See, that's how we know there is going to be sin during the thousand year reign. Remember, the devil is going to be gathering up somebody for the final battle with Christ at the end of the thousand years. So there are going to be ones who try and sneak in. Thorns and briars sneak in. Seed blows in and gets into a garden and then they start to grow. Before you know it, there they are. Okay? Well, God will be tending Israel constantly and will not allow it in Israel. Got it? His people will be protected. So the enemies will not come from Israel. Come amongst ourselves. They'll come from the Gentiles. <coughs> so what are their enemies? <coughs> now, <coughs> five. So, or, or <coughs> let him rely on my protection. Let him make peace with me. Let him make peace with me, he repeats. So God says, or let him rely on my protection. He's either going to destroy them and burn them up, or he's going to do what? He crushes them. Let them be saved. Let them be saved if they do what? Repent. Yes. <clears throat> Repent and call on. Yeah. Who said? So, what does Joel 2.32 say? Everybody knows this verse. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Read it again. Let him make peace with me. How do you make peace with God? Repent. Repent and call on the name of the Lord. That's how you make peace with God. All right. In the days to come, <laughs> Jacob will take root. Who's Jacob? Israel. Uh -huh. Israel. We'll take root. So now we're back to what? What what takes root? A plant. We're back to the vineyard. Okay? Israel is like a vine. Okay? Israel will take root. Israel will blossom and sprout. <coughs> So what comes from blossoms? Fruit. Fruit. Okay. Now this could be. Give me some um, examples of what the fruit could be coming out of Israel. Saved people. <clears throat> Saved people. <clears throat> All right. What does God call, or Jesus call, fruit in the New Testament? Fruit of the Spirit. Jesus. <laughs> what is our fruit? Our works. When good works. Okay. In the book of Revelation, our good works are uh, symbolized by the white robes we will wear. Mm -hmm. But in the Gospels, it is the fruit that we will produce our good deeds. Okay? And Ephesians 2.10, everybody knows that verse because they've heard Roger say it many times. We are God's workmanship to do the good works which God created had for us from before we were ever born, basically, okay? He has good works for us to do, and that is the fruit we produce. Now, Israel will also, what else, 
From a woman, what does she bear? She bears fruit by having children, correct? Israel will also bear children to fill the earth. Remember that most people are going to be dead after this day of judgment. There are not going to be very many people left alive. Remember, two-thirds of Israel is going to be dead. The church is gone. The church is, you know, before that day. The church will no longer be in a body form like we are, in the physical. We will just be <coughs> spiritual with supernatural glorified bodies. We are not going to be human anymore. So there has to be people born to populate the earth. So that is another way to spread fruit. Israel will be blossoming and spreading fruit. So they will be doing good deeds. They will be proclaiming Jesus Christ and they will be repopulating the earth. Okay? Like the striking of him who has struck them, has he struck them? Does anybody understand what that means? Like the striking of him, and who's him again? Israel. Who has, no, him is God. God, God, yeah. Who has struck them, <laughs> has he struck them? Israel. One of them is. That says, has God struck Israel as much as he has struck the other nations? Okay? That's what that means. So it's asking, has he done Yes, this is a rhetorical question, then he answers it. You got it? Now, I could have used the other translation, but I wanted you to really look at this and catch it in your mind, because not everybody, like I said, has a tr other translations like I do. I have many translations. This one is harder to understand, but it makes you really think. All right. <clears throat> so, then he's, or like the slaughter of his slain, have they been slain? Has God destroyed Israel like he has destroyed other nations? All right, and then the answer comes. You contended with them by banishing them. So the answer is no. Okay? It says, God spread them across the earth and took them away from their land, the land that he gave to them, okay? He banished them by driving them away. With his fierce wind, what is the symbol of, what are the symbols of the Holy Spirit? The wind. The wind. <clears throat> With his fierce wind, he has expelled them on the day of the east wind. Now, who took them and spread them out across the nation? <coughs> Give me some answers. The Tower of Babel. No, 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 not the Tower of Babel. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Who else? Kings. What other nations did this to Israel? Egypt. Assyria? No. Yes, Israel did. I mean, Assyria <laughs> did. That is another one. How about Rome? Rome came in and destroyed Jerusalem down to the ground, killed many, and then took them and dispersed them across the earth. Okay? That's how God punished Israel. But while he was doing it, what was he doing? Cleansing them from all idol worship. Okay? Therefore, through this, Jacob's iniquity will be forgiven. And this will be the full price of the pardoning of his sin. Like silver is burned, and the dross is burned away to make it pure, God was purifying them, getting rid of all their idol worship, getting rid of all their altars of sin, okay? When he makes all the altar stones like pulverized chalk, they're going to be destroyed. The Asherah poles, incense altars, 
where the fortified city is isolated, now we're into Judah and Israel itself, God banished everybody from the land. Where do we learn this from? What books? This is one of them. What book are we in? Isaiah. Yeah, Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah is huge about God telling Jeremiah, this is what I'm going to do with Nebuchadnezzar against him. The book of Ezekiel and the book of Daniel also. Remember, these three prophets, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel, all lived at the same time. They all knew each other. Jeremiah was left in the land. Ezekiel and Daniel were taken and lived in battle. Okay? So we have Israelites spread throughout the earth. All right, now, we have, um, for the fortified city is isolated, he is basically decimated Israel. Now, when its limbs are dry, they are broken off. Now, here is a wonderful part, and then I'm going to have to leave. <clears throat> when its limbs, who, are, who is it? It is Israel again, okay? When its limbs are dry, they are broken off. Women come and make a fire with them. That means the limbs that are broken off get burned up, okay? <clears throat> For they are not a people of discernment. That means these Israelites are stupid and foolish. Okay? I have to cleanse them. I have to make them strong. And the only way I can do that is by discipline. Therefore, their maker will not have compassion on them because they have rebelled against God and they will never want him like the other Israelites like Abraham, who had faith only like he. And their creator will not be gracious to them. These are the ones he is going to destroy. What did this do for us in this room right here? He took the gospel away from who? Israel and gave it to the Gentiles. For us right now, God's compassion was shown to the Gentiles because Israel would not accept it. He did not destroy Israel because of it, like he does the, he is going to do to the nations. There is a remnant because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now write this down. Romans, and we're still in chapter 11. Romans 11, 17 through 21 and Romans 11, verse 32, is all about the broken off branches and the wild olive tree. The wild olive tree is the Gentile population. The true olive tree is Israel. When those branches were broken off, the wild olive tree was grafted into <coughs> the true tree. And that's us. God afforded us life. Okay? Very important, this 11, 17 through 21 and verse 32. <clears throat> In that day, and what day? Which day is this one? When he comes back. This is a different day. when the Lord returns. No. This day, he is going to be threshing. What do you do? What, did, what does threshing do, Ronnie? Thresh. Yes. Okay, you've got the, all the stuff that you go through the farm, I mean the field, with your machines, and you've got all the seed and all the junk, <clears throat> and you've got separating machines. They do this. And you get the true kernels of wheat, and they get rid of the other junk. Okay, well, these threshers, God, will be. You ever hear of the wheat and the tares in the New Testament? 
all the tares will be thrown away, all the wheat will be yeah. kept. Okay, so in this day, God is going to be calling, this is, remember, a different day than the judgment day. God is going to call back Israel to Israel. Has that happened? Yes. yes. When did it start happening? In the 40s, right? 1948. Okay? God started calling Israel back to Israel, and Israel was given back, and Israel has been a nation ever since. It is not Palestine. Do not believe people, and don't listen to them and let them influence you that that is Palestine. Because there are people to this day who refuse to accept that Israel is Israel. They still call it Palestine. It is Israel. It has always been Israel. Because God gave it to them forever and ever. Okay? But God started calling them back. <clears throat> In 1948, and he's still doing it to this day. There are still people returning from Russia and from Eastern European nations. They are still returning there. They're returning there from Ethiopia. They're returning there from all over this earth. Still returning there to this day. Mary Renee, I got done. I am impressed. Thank you all.